Welcome to this video on uh, an Excel tutorial about using formulae. This is what we're going to be covering in the tutorial, so let's begin. So here's a series of uh, test marks, typical situation you might be facing perhaps if you're a teacher. You want to convert the marks in this test into percentages. Um, and what we need to know in order to do that is the total test, uh, the mark the test is out of, so let's say it was out of 50. Uh, we're now going to divide this number by 50 and then multiply by 100. So if you want to do that, just to go into a formula in Excel, there's several ways of doing it. Um, you can either use the formula bar up here, or the code to Excel to start a formula is pressing the equals key. And now it's uh, time to type the formula in. So we want to take this cell here, so we click it, we want to divide that by 50, and then we want to multiply by 100. And you can see it's coming up here in the formula bar press return and that calculates the formula. So this person's got 64%. Now if we want to say display that maybe to one decimal place we can right click format cells number and we can change that to whatever position we want. Let's say we want it to 1 dp. Okay. Now the real power of Excel formulae is that I don't have to keep on doing this. I can just carry, I can get what Boaz's percentage is simply by moving over to the corner of this cell and you can see the pointer changes to be a thinner plus symbol and if I click and drag downwards I get Boaz's percentage 82 percent and I keep on going and I can get all five students percentages. Now this is a really really powerful feature so if we look at the formula that Excel is using here then we find out that uh, Boaz is his formula is calculated in this way. It's using cell B7. So this is called relative cell referencing. When you tell it, when you drag the formula down like this, Excel thinks, well actually what I was doing here is I was taking the cell 1 to the left here, dividing it by 50 and times it by 100. So when he tells me he wants the formula for this cell, what he really means is he wants the cell next to it to be divided by 50 and times by 100. Now, that's absolutely brilliant if that's exactly what you want to do. But maybe there's a case where you might want to uh, have a particular cell that is always being used. So it's not going to move down to B7, but it will be a different cell. And one situation that might arise in is, let's say, for example, I want to uh, now calculate the marks for a slightly different test. So let's say we go for test 2. And let me just insert before we start here, just some marks for test 2. Uh, okay, let's say these are the marks for test 2, completely random, but let's see. Now, let's say, for example, that test 1, the maximum mark for test 1 was 50. But let's say that test 2, the maximum mark, is now 90. So we want to be able to change the formula. Now we could do that by simply typing in the formula here, but instead of putting in a 50, we could put in a 90. But an elegant way of doing this is actually using this maximum mark box. And then I'll show you why this is important in a moment. So if we want to use this cell, then we want to replace the 50 by cell B4. So we click that there. OK, now let's drag the formula down. Watch what happens. Oh dear. The numbers have changed, they shouldn't have done, and this one is actually saying value, so giving some kind of error. And the reason is, if we look at the formula here, what it's doing is it's taking the cell 1 to the left and dividing now by this cell, because as the formula has moved down, so has the cell B4, it's become B5. How do we tell Excel not to do this? Well, if we hover over the B4 here, what we need to do is to tell it that we absolutely want B4. And there's two ways of doing this. If we press the F4 key, we can see that B4 becomes $B$4. And each of those dollars means fix the next character. So this is fixing B4. OK, so if we refer that, drag this down, and that works nicely. OK, so now let's try and do the same thing again. We copy this formula across. It should now work. 90%. That doesn't seem right. 45 out of 90 is 50 percent. Let's see what's going on. Well, if we look at the formula here, what it's done is it's divided by this cell over here, whereas we wanted it to actually divide by this cell here. Now, 
one thing we can do here is just simply drag this across and now it's using the right cell. However, with a slight trick to the absolute cell referencing, we can actually mean that we can just copy this formula across each time. And let me show you how you do that. So here, if you look at, I'll just make this, the column slightly wider so you can see the whole formula. We see we've got a dollar here, that's fixing the B, and a dollar here, that's fixing the 4. What we want to do is allow the column to change when we copy the formula across, but we want the row to stay the same. So if we delete this dollar symbol, and now copy the formula across, what we're getting here is now it does D6 divided by D4, and it's fixed the 4, but now it's using the column 1 to the left. So if we drag this down, we should get all of these calculating correctly. If we just check the bottom one, it is doing D10 divided by this one simply. And that is how you use Excel to calculate formulae, applying formulae to several cells by dragging down or you could drag across, and then applying formulae with values that remain fixed, the so-called absolute cell referencing.